editive will become bigger and more affordable coming to india additive manufacturing is ushering us into the world of industrial revolution 4.0 and india's manufacturing landscape we can uh, use digital processes communications imaging architecture and in using am to provide digital flex flexibility automation and efficiency today uh, this market is valued at 7 billion as per 2017 wolers report and the industry is growing rapidly and is expected to touch as you can see uh, 18 billion in 2022 and it can reach up to 35.6 billion by 2026 Uh, so uh, on the left hand side you will see the landscape of all the global companies and the squares are as per the size you know like the uh, pie of the market share so if you see in the hardware the polymer metal machines are highest then polymer machines we will see that uh, percentage also then we have uh, you know software uh, design companies and then we have material companies we will also see how each of the percentage market share is there but coming to india in the asean group india has a 3 to 5% market share but overall in global it is around 1% only so in this context what india like the government of india felt was that there is a need to spur a national strategy document for additive manufacturing it is called nsam and its goal was that through additive manufacturing our goal to reach the gross value added of 1 trillion economy by 2025 should come uh, and uh, uh, additive manufacturing should aid that so uh, the vision is uh, make in india and atmanirbhar uh, bharat should be there so that we can position ourselves as a global hub for additive manufacturing and create and protect our own integrity of the manufactured indigenously manufactured parts by appropriate intellectual properties and uh, the um, Uh, actually the uh, ensam document is very uh, uh, detailed and it talks about the mission vision we will see that and the focus sectors here see they have uh, shown at least uh, 10 focus sectors Uh, which is not comprehensive but it shows the major thrust areas uh, of where the uh, applications are based out of so uh, to achieve um, the mission of the government of india what all ncam has in its objective is fairly broad based to enable first of all equipment uh, you know uh, facility for development testing validation through our, ourselves and through our partners and giving mentor mentorship and access to funding for our startups to become a hub of knowledge and uh, through our, our partners share it among the various stakeholders to become the apex body and help through the hub and spoke model help other coes also to develop and enable adoption of am with uh, uh, you know my partnering with large indian businesses so that it pro proliferates to smes and even uh, psus to enable uh, research and development in new technologies whether it is indigenous software machines or materials and to establish a framework for uh, defining standards and certifications we are working with astm we are working with cdsco for medical and semilac for uh, defense and enable indigenization and commercialization of parts especially in defense and aerospace we are keen to work with hindustan aeronautics limited and to create a process of patent so that every uh, entrepreneur or a business knows how they can protect their design especially because everything is stored in the cad file uh, how to protect it with proper patent so that they can prevent infringement of copyrights and to enable global companies to set up local r&d and manufacturing centers in india and so the main uh, uh, what should i say the uh, you know guiding the pillar for all this is that we should be uh, not uh, dependent on imports and it should be uh, make in india whether it is material equipment design testing inspection and commercialization and uh, uh nsam actually has set certain goals so every mission and vision will have certain goals so uh, government of india is keen that we develop 500 products which is like 
in through in localization indigenization and new help 100 new startups to come up develop uh, 50 india specific uh, technologies and over the next 5 years upskill 1 lakh manpower and develop 10 new manufacturing sectors and create awareness for adoption of am products so uh, what how is ncam how it was formed it's actually a section 8 company established by the ministry of electronics and information technology in partnership with the uh, government of telangana the itenc department so um, there was a uh, rfp and all the states uh, actually bidded for that and because uh, uh, telangana had all its uh, elements in the proper state this prestigious uh, project was uh, awarded to telangana and this partnership was formed so the vision of ncam is to create and enable a sustainable ecosystem to help product innovation with emphasis on research design development testing along with our partners which could which are all the pillars academia industry and government and wherein we will use the technology of additive manufacturing so it acts as the central agency to promote foster and drive promotion of additive manufacturing with the aim to make india atmanirbhar in additive manufacturing the mission is to position india as a global hub for innovation and research to promote creation and generation of indian ipr to ensure a sustainable ecosystem is there with with the latest technologies that we can bring with partnership with industry and to ensure that the parts are manufactured which are functional which can help uh, our domestic industry grow and also we we can export uh, um, and ensure that adequate um, measures for protection of am technology is made so ncam has five pillars by which it is working the first is in skill development in skill development we have different formats we conduct one and two day workshop led by with in, in partnership with industry on various trending topics like the, we are going to now con, uh, conduct the, in the next month along with hexagon a, pro, a workshop on reverse engineering this is just an example so we conduct industry led workshops we conduct two or three uh, national conferences each year one on metal one on uh, healthcare sector and one in automotive and we also are uh, partners and host to the am tech expo which happens every year in december so uh, there we give lot of facility and uh, visibility to our startups they can put up a stall and all our partners are invited apart from this we are uh, going to have some other initiatives where in uh, skilling programs like we conduct faculty development programs with our partner ou and iit is and we are also planning to conduct a formal internship and fellowship program a uh, new product development and indigenization we are already working with hal and drdo for understanding what are the parts which they would want to be localized and ind indigenized and uh, enabling adoption and industry readiness it can be through a multiple pronged approach of helping them understand their problem areas connecting them with the right mentorship and also helping build the standards and access to am infrastructure we already have with usmania university a center for product design and development in additive manufacturing which has fdm sla slm machines apart from others and also uh, uh, scanners so and we ourselves are in the process of building a similar infrastructure so which uh, uh, through which our startups and smes can get access on a very reasonable rate and um, we are also uh, looking to once our infrastructure is ready we will also be putting up various uh, r&d projects and working closely with our startups and smes to develop some uh, uh, innovative uh, products which will be useful both in software materials and in applications so uh, how did we all start this we had for the last uh, couple of months we had a sustained effort where we did awareness drives in all four zones of the country wherein we targeted uh, university students 
and uh, we have actually now crossed 3500 students we are looking for active partners to develop a little long term programs for skilled professionals who want to uh, shift or uh, want to upgrade themselves in and make a career in additive manufacturing we are in the process of doing that and uh, we have already started our startup cohort so Uh, every year we pick a, a, a very small bunch of uh, niche uh, innovative um, uh, startups and uh, we help uh, incubate them in this manner so how do we we give them uh, as per their problem statement we help them with mentors in three tracks we help them in mentors in am technology we help them in mentoring in their information technology and we help in mentoring them for the go to market strategy we also have tied up with uh, partners who, who will not only deliver on ipr we give them the basic knowledge but also help them do the patent bit Uh, because we are very particular that our startup should get, uh, at the end of this cohort be able to give give up uh, give a patentable product of course we give access to infrastructure through our, right now through our partners iit hyderabad uh, betic iit uh, chennai ou many uh, partners we have got and uh, which also help in product testing and helping in business plan development ipr facilitation uh, marketing branding and also we try to give them connects through not only our network with industry but also through these regular events that we conduct in terms of workshops and expos so um, uh what is additive manufacturing all of you all know so i am not going to take you through the video actually uh as per astm additive uh, manufacturing is a process of joining materials to make objects from 3d model data usually layer upon layer as opposed to subtractive manufacturing so uh what is additive manufacturing Additive manufacturing, also known as 3D printing, is a process that creates a physical object from a digital design. An engineer designs the object using computer-aided design or CAD software. The 3D design file is then sliced into thin layers and uploaded to an additive manufacturing machine. The manufacturing process begins once an extremely thin layer of metal powder is spread across the platform. A heat source such as laser or electron beam then melts the first layer of the 3D design. The platform is lowered and another layer of metal powder is spread across the platform. The layering and melting process is then repeated until the part is complete. The metallic powder is removed and a physical object is revealed. Additive manufacturing allows you to produce parts that are lighter, stronger and more durable than traditionally made parts. Build times are faster. Engineers can add precise features and complex geometries without increasing cost. In fact, additive manufacturing is revolutionizing the way we work. So, um now we'll come to understanding additive manufacturing in the most sought after sector aerospace the aerospace and defense market in india is estimated to reach 70 billion by 2030 as momentum is picking up due to improving infrastructure connectivity to tier 2 towns and huge passenger traffic and government thrust in this area so you know uh, if you go to hyderabad airport you can understand what i'm talking about it's growing at 15% in the last 5 years and passenger traffic has increased from 70 to 200 million and it's only going to increase even in domestic and in the international sector only thing uh, challenge in this it's a highly regulated market because you know uh, the, the the testing and safety standards are very high as human life is involved so the next uh, early adopter in additive manufacturing is uh, medical so orthopedics implant could be uh, like some use cases 3d printed medical devices have advantages of customization manufacturability mechanical properties fast processing and the patient uh, with a small uh, you know aperture uh, not a big cut area uh, can the, the uh, implant can be inserted with less pain you know using lasers this is all possible and post operative also becomes very 
easy. I have seen this kind of thing even in uh, customized dental implants uh, the using uh, 3D scan. And uh, orthopedic and uh, prosthetic devices is also a very big market. Uh, 15, uh, 40, uh, 0.41 million uh, dollars it can be, and it's growing at around 8%. Uh, why is it growing? Because there's in, increasing incidence of uh, accidents, geriatric population, also lifestyle diseases like uh, diabetes or, or, or you know, osteoarthritis, obesity, increasing road accidents, and also more people are coming under insurance. So they are being covered. So these are all the drivers which will help for better adoption of the ONP. And um, actually, globally, one of the fastest growing segment is consumer products. So uh, you can see on the with the pictures on the left hand side that hearing aids, helmet, 3D printed glass frames, shoe soles, all these are, um, uh, you know, catching up. Many of them are made from recyclable materials also. So top reasons why you could choose AM as a good career option because uh, as per uh, the uh, World Economic Forum, the manufacturing and production industries will drive the global economic recovery after COVID-19 pandemic. And it will be the fourth industrial re revolution wherein additive manufacturing along with Internet of Things and cloud-based analytics will be in the forefront. So because of this, uh, what will happen uh, is that more and more demand for skilled labor will increase. So we have found out uh, through our global survey conducted by the ERI that the average salary of an uh, uh, engineer would be uh, presently, if it is at around uh, 12 lakhs per annum, it could grow to around 17 lakhs for, per annum in the coming years. And we need uh, professionals in materials aspects, in application engineers, in design engineers. In all these sectors, we definitely need engineers. So uh, what, uh, you know, what kind of uh, improvement does uh, uh, additive manufacturing bring about? So it brings about rapid prototyping, which all of you all know, so that quick and cost effective creation of specimen prototypes can be done by engineers and they can iterate and, you know, uh, refine their design ideas without uh, incurring extra cost. You, uh, engineers uh, also can uh, bring design optimization by creating complex geometries, internal structures, for better performance and it also allows customization especially in case of medical sector and reduce tooling cost you know when for no need for expensive tooling when you're integrating and making your part in one go then you don't need to have those uh, fittings using tooling and the faster time to market by reducing the time and cost of the product development life cycle am companies can bring the products faster to the market which give them the advantage and uh, uh, overall, the growth of the additive manufacturing sector is a sunrise industry. The compounded annual growth rate has been targeted at 25% year on year. And in India, there are many advantages. If you position yourself as a skilled manpower and upgrade your skills, then you can have access to the global marketplace, be part of successful uh, startups and or SME. And uh, these are all the uh, ways in which you can help being part of the ecosystem which will enhance precision manufacturing and automation and bring new product development. And uh, also additive manufacturing is one industry that can give engineers exposure to various uh, domains. Like I have seen people who have worked in oil and gas, who have uh, worked as design engineers, then they have moved uh, uh, to consumer products, they have also moved to aer aerospace. So uh, it gives exposure to so many industries uh, and it's a satisfying career there, therefore. Okay, uh, now I want to quickly tell you about the history of uh, uh, additive manufacturing. Much of this will be covered. Please have patience if it's a repetition. So the uh, Dr. Hideo had filed the first patent for uh, rapid prototyping technology. Then SLA came because of Charles Hull. We all know that. 
and he was um, a patent was granted to Carl Decker for SLA. Then from SLA in the 1990s, we moved to fusion deposition modeling and clinical application for biomaterials was, you know, with tissue regeneration was used, uh, was done on FDM machines. Then came the MCP technologies uh, uh, with SLM and organ printing came, became uh, uh, popular. Dr. Boyer conceived the rep wrap concept of open source self-replicating 3D printer. Colored 3D printers were introduced. Selective laser customization and on-demand manufacturing came into being for, with, for industrialized part. In 2010s, 3D printing was applied even for gold and silver. World's first 3D printed car, robotic aircraft was introduced. Solid concepts introduced 3D printed metal gun. Implementation of metal, uh, sorry, multi-arm bioprinter to integrate tissue fabrication with printed vas, you know, vasculature was done. And first 3D printed uh, pill was approved by US um, uh, FDA. And MIT developed novel 3D printing method for transparent glass also. So now 3D printers essentially in this uh, COVID time helped a lot to build uh, ventilator parts, testing equipment, personal protective equipment and other medical supplies and uh, helped in the drones, helped in um, non-invasive laser surgery uh, during this time and that only spurred this all these developments. Uh, so I just wanted to, before we go to technologies, just wanted to, this is from Wohler's and AMFG's report. Just wanted to show you that, you know, 40% of um, the segment comprises of printers, obviously, followed by uh, materials, uh, followed by software and service sector always will be matching almost or, you know, uh, with the uh, manufacturing, so it is at 30%. And as I mentioned, uh, with uh, 18, including products and services, 18 million we are at globally, as per uh, the report of holders. And uh, in the industry segment, the highest segment is actually automotive. 31.7% uh, is uh, automotive, uh, followed by consumer products, followed by business machines and all other sectors. Okay. So, Again, uh, AMFG has now made it category of the hardware wise. So 56% uh, nearly half of it is hardware and one like just 13% is software, 20% is material. So you can say around one fourth is materials along with consulting companies forms of, uh, one half of uh, sorry, one fourth of the additive manufacturing segment. And uh, here, if you want to know okay, what kind of machine sells more, uh, if you can see, uh, I'm just reading it out, 22.5% is by metal machines, followed by polymer machines, okay? So this is how it is being done and 3D printing hardware segment, again, it is showing how like 40% is metal machines followed by uh, polymer machines and then fol followed by desktop machines. So global AM market scenario, the current estimated global metal AM market is uh, going to reach 2.02 uh, billion euros and it's growing at 24% CAGR. So key focus sectors, as we told earlier, aerospace, defense, medical, oil and gas. And EOS is the leading metal uh, AM equipment manufacturer, OEM, with a 28% market share. Bimit Italy has estimated revenue of 30 million euros and it's the largest contract manufacturing company in the world. So this uh, chart is just showing you the pace at which these segments are growing. And the landscape, again, the squares uh, are in the uh, ratio to their turnovers, the biggest pie taken by 3D systems, followed by stratuses, followed by materialized and shape ways. Um, this is the global uh, competitive landscape of companies. And what are the focus sectors where, you know, adoption has happened and industrial parts are being manufactured? Obviously, first is aerospace and defense. So in, in that, actually, what all are the parts that are all, already being manufactured? Uh, you know, uh, landing gears, thrust reverser doors, small surveillance, drones, gimbal eye, grenade launchers, complex brackets, jet engine components, 
uh, repair of turbine blades and other high value components are like rocket engines and all are being manufactured in aerospace and in uh, industrial oil and gas actually uh, you will see down a whole high wear and high performance uh, parts being manufactured in healthcare there are a lot of things organs vasculature tumor models disease models surgical instruments okay and in implants limbs craniofacial implants casts and stents and in dental crowns bridges and splints are being manufactured these are just some examples in consumer goods for example consumer electronics wearable uh, you know smart wearable devices jewelry shoes even clothing then furniture office accessories music instruments and bicycles and sometimes food and medicine is also being uh, manufactured in consumer goods so the global uh, customer landscape these are some of the overview of the major uh, oems airbus obviously mclaren boeing uh, uh, schlumberger all these are you know names that you have already heard of and on the right hand side you could uh, see what are the types of parts that are being manufactured you know assemblies heat exchangers i have mentioned this and we will also see use cases so now coming to the uh, additive manufacturing technologies you have done this so i'll go very fast what is shown in the gray highlight are all which are relevant to metal additive manufacturing so it is metal extrusion binder jetting powder bed fusion directed energy deposition and sheet lamination okay so in this let us just see comparatively what are the strengths and weaknesses uh, of all this technologies so uh, powder bed fusion uh, what are the strengths it gives high level of complexity the powder acts as support material it could be for a wide range of materials uh, similarly binder jetting allows it is better for color printing and better productivity and it has it's versatile in the many range of materials can be used sheet lamination high volumetric build rates with the low cost it's a low cost technology and it allows combination of metal foils as uh, uh, metal extrusion is also a low cost um, alternative and can be used in an office environment the parts have good structural properties and uh, directed energy deposition it is not limited by direction or axis effective for repairs and added features it's very fast so multiple materials and highest uh, single point deposition rate speed and accuracy you know so uh, again i would want uh, this is just showing the pros and cons of all the different metal uh, 3d processes and uh, some disadvantages also we, i would like to highlight sometimes what happens is limited product uh, production potential comes because the high binder content makes uh, sintering difficult there is shrinkage uh, the parts may, may have lower density uh, sometimes even the machine and ancillary equipment costs are very high especially for the latest technologies like pbf and det uh, uh, this is an interesting chart that shows the maturity of the technologies versus the industrialization index so on the x axis you have the technology maturity index so from on a scale of 1 to 5 1 being basic research then research to prove feasibility technology development technology demonstration finally to system launch this is the technology maturity and on the y axis you have like from prototype how you can go to first use case to industrial use to widespread use so basically this chart shows that in a matter of uh for the index to generally reach this level it takes uh, around 2 to 5 years and the uh, uh, technologies that have reached this level of industrialization are obviously laser beam powder bed fusion and electronic beam powder bed fusion and powder uh, laser deposition wire is also getting there and filament fdm is also uh, uh, close on heels is filament fdm and binder jetting okay so just shows uh, what is doing where and this is also a chart that shows 
as per the form of your material powder wire sheet rods what are all the technologies and what are all the companies concentrated so you can come to know like how popular laser beam powder bed fusion or a direct energy deposition is out here you know from this landscape uh, you will get this data in am power insights so what are the uh, uh, plus points of uh, metal 3d printing it gives you the fastest pro uh, path to production using a cad file you know cad file and uh, you need not invest in tooling so if you want to keep changing the design you can go and change in the software and faster design iterations means you can get a better product and sometimes you know like you can see on the right hand side how complex uh, porosity is there how complex the geometry is you can get near net shape which is not possible otherwise sometimes also complex parts can be consolidated to make one part so it brings better uh, 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 you know it eases uh, the or increases the speed of the assembly line and brings better stru structural integrity less parts are there so less uh, problems of um, uh, assembly and uh, it, it is of course the best for low volume uh, niche productions like uh, a functional prototype end use parts where only which you need few things and you want to introduce new design variant and mold inserts industrial and medical jigs and fixtures and grippers uh, spares i mean if you have if you don't know if it's getting obsolete and there are no spares available and you quickly want spares also for obsolete parts sometimes you know you want to increase its in service life so you through a reverse engineering develop a product quickly and bionic shapes lattice structures lightweight parts it reduces the carbon footprint because you're using less materials and giving the same strength and with better efficiency so uh, sustainability you can understand why because we are using less material wastage is there and uh, and uh, no storage cost also because you can do uh, decentralized manufacturing once the design is ready you can just manufacture at the site to supply and uh, uh, one more advantage is wide spread use of 3d printing technology will increase the demand for design engineers technicians and applications engineers in the near future and uh, what are some of the concerns okay um, so see there are many uh, parameters like uh, part printing quality post processing maintenance requirements limited availability of materials geometry how accurate it will be then build size limitations standardization and cost of equipment and materials and uh, dependency on imports so uh, incapability of metal additive sometimes you know it cannot guarantee dimensional accuracy and material properties for a given product so that could be because technical standards have not been developed and uh, you know uh, process parameters have not been uh, set properly also uh, and there could be lack of uh, you know precision in the printing due to wrong uh, uh, parameter setting or distorted geometry due to the me mechanical properties not material not chosen properly uh, now uh, post processing also is a very uh, like a, a tedious issue for metal manufactured parts because uh, you have to remove the excess powder you have to check the stress relief then support structure removal machining operations to get the finish eliminating print induced defects all these things come into play which needs more uh, you know what should i say uh, technology and precision and uh, routine maintenance becomes uh, an issue because earlier you would have different parts you which you could disassemble now if you are doing it as one part and it breaks then that becomes an issue for maintenance one of the limitations is to the exploitation of metal am is lack of qualified workforce uh, because we don't have proper designers if, uh, uh, for uh, metal process especially and maintenance engineers and lot of research has to go into this and uh, also uh, you know the bed sizes uh, limitations is there so very large parts maybe we cannot manufacture now of course more high end printers are coming and our technical lead will tell you so next uh,
you know one check production of dangerous items even guns can be printed so next we'll come to need for defam and name technology so first i would want to start with the problem statement like what if a person or an entrepreneur or a business wants to adopt um, metal amp production where does it start so how does it make the uh, consolidation or the decision like which parts to be printed and which to go by a conventional difficulty in developing business case financial constraints due to high uh, machining uh, machine costs of uh, equipment and lack of adequate design and material experience and they do not have the correct technology know how to print the parts and again the last is that certification and qualification uh, problems will be there so where do you use uh, you know design for additive manufacturing combining defam and topology optimization can lead to designs which are not only lightweight but al also optimized to specific manufacturing process for example design optimized 3d printing may have unique features like self supporting angles overhang lattice structure suppose you want to make this um uh, you know work uh, uh, work uh, production carrier wpc and it is uh, having now only one you can make it in designed in such a way that it can carry three parts so these kind of uh, areas where customization can be done it is very helpful then the second thing is in uh, part consolidation when complex geometries you want to make it into one then you can use it and defam can also be used for quick and effective production of prototypes or customized tooling and fixtures uh, so that you can choose the best design and lastly it can be used for direct part replacement with unique geometries which were not seen in the original part so these are all the areas where the defam is used so here they have shown an example of a fixture how it was initially given and through finite element model this is done by ansys how they saw that what part could be removed and um, the, how it can still be effective in terms of uh, design strength and uh, compatibility to the overall uh, design of the um, uh, product and what are all the materials which have weldable characteristics so obviously titanium stainless steel maraging steel cobalt chrome aluminum alloy nickel super alloy these are some of the materials now let us see some very interesting uh, use cases uh, in the fuel economy in aerospace uh, you know uh, more uh, with more advances in rocket reuse if you, your payload uh, if it increases then your cost per kilogram goes up very high so every kilogram you have to try to reduce the cost by doing light weighting so how will you reduce weight for non structural non flight critical metal components uh, it could be you know by use of solid or internal lattice structures so you know brackets these are some examples you know hinges brackets these are the uh, ways in which you can bring uh, those kind of parts and reduce the weight so uh, uh, feather light for uh, space uh, space flight radio frequency filters so high throughput satellites can carry several hundred of these devices airbus defense and space achieved the first 3d printed uh, rf that radio frequency filter tested and validated for commercial use these filters were 50% lighter and they were built uh, stronger faster with a single piece and with less lead time and um, optimized satellite brackets uh, topology op optimization was used so 25% lighter brackets uh, four uh, unique satellite uh, bracket each customized and optimized to the specific mounting location in half time it was done you know so uh, in automotive it is very interesting like it is going uh, from these small parts like we have shown in the chart uh, hose holder blank holder gas filled absorber closure clamp hinges kinematic component seat adjustment heat protection blank steering gears and brake line holder these kind of uh, parts can be done and now you see uh, currently it is going even more advanced 
uh, it is being used for um, a manufacturing process both for interiors and exteriors in exteriors bumpers wind breakers are being done then the power train drive train uh, engine components are being done frame body doors door panels are being done um, uh, and uh, electronic components of course like sensors uh, single part control panels on the dashboard so many uh, these kind of uh, parts are being done uh, by am and wheels tires and suspension like hub caps tire suspension rings are being done uh, using am interior seating dashboard and seat frames and exhaust um, emissions cooling vents are a favorite using aluminum alloys and additive manufacturing so uh, typically uh, tooling conformal cooling this kind of uh, internal structures complicated ones can be easily manufactured using additive manufacturing these are some examples overview of uh, indian metal 3d printing technology so let us talk about the business models in india it is simple it is can be classified into three types reseller companies which sell premium brands of 3d uh, printers manufactured in germany or us uh, through their indian partnerships or there are indian entrepreneurs who have set up partnership with foreign collaborators to share 3d printing technology and manufacture printers in india and the third category is high tech companies designing and manufacturing indigenous 3d printers and also selling 3d printed parts as service bureaus so uh as per uh, dpiit there are around 300 plus active companies uh, registered in india and 70% of them are micro small and medium enterprises with turnover less than 100 crores um now the thing is uh, what is uh, the uh, as per the segment you can see hardware material software and service who are all the major companies you can see through this chart we made this chart with a lot of uh, you know we did a survey and we found out companies divide by zero mekuva tavasta fractal all these you know shri rapid technologies bfw ace all these are domestic brands uh, brands of oems i mean prayojaka can you know figure out where it is materialize and proto labs are like in service and also in software they are uh, multinationals and in india you have uh, shri rapid technologies reddington all these uh, kind of companies and in software actually we are looking for indian companies there are not many so uh, key oem players in india uh, bfw uh, rr cat they have a uh, direct energy deposition printer of course iisc and all uh, iits they have many good metal machines have been installed ace micromatic and intech solution and uh, these are all the companies which are uh, printing 3d printed parts imaginarium premium incredible uh, 3d uh, vipro 3d bharat forge and objectify and these are some of the examples uh, of app metal am applications heat exchangers heat sinks uh, flow reactor miniature robotic products filters jigs and fixtures valve cage vortex tube etc so uh, intech and hl developed first in india 3d printed aero engine part using super alloy cm 247 lc and it also got its uh, certification and also semilac approved the indo mimm intech developed metal powder for a laser powder bed fusion method it is indigenously developed nickel alloy and it got its certification from semilac so now many other i met companies like matrix nano m4p these are also developing powders and many are also developing in bio materials you know powders so that's it from my side over to you all
Thank you, ma'am. It's very insightful talk. Um, so I think if any participants have any questions, they can unmute and ask the questions. I will uh, Sir, I request. Yeah. Ah, Rakesh, ah. I would like you to come in. Uh, Ma'am, I have a question. Yes. Uh, it is like, uh, it, does any uh, policies are made for uh, the improvisation of uh, uh, 3D printing ecosystem in uh, India across industries from the government? Actually, it's... Uh, yeah. Policy in the sense, uh, I'm, I'm Rakesh, I'm technical officer of NCAN. I'm answering the question which you have raised uh, from the participant. See, policy making in the sense, first of all, we have taken from the medical front and we are developing the policy along with the ASTM and CDSCO for the guidelines of the uh, medical devices, framework, for the, uh, framework and guidelines for the medical devices development in India. Yes. There are so many. Uh, this is the main one which have, we have started from last uh, six months. We have started and work is in place. Hope I answered your question. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hi. If nobody is asking, then I have a couple of questions. <clears throat> uh, it's mainly from the feedback that we got. Uh, uh, so most of the participants are from teaching faculty and some of are from industry. So industry participants, what they are looking for is change the career and they want to move to additive manufacturing career. They want to know what are the opportunities uh, you know, they have and uh, uh, what skill set they need uh, if they want to move to you know additive manufacturing that one question and the second question is our uh, teaching faculty are looking for research projects on 3d printing and they want to engage their students in 3d printing can and can our industries provide any kind of support Ma'am, are you taking up? One part I can take up, Rakesh. You take up the research bit. See, regarding uh, the skill and opportunities, we did a very in detailed uh, uh, industry uh, voice recording and to see what are the skill gaps and we came up with a report. So if I want to simplify it, they all many leading uh, there were uh, from people from IIT and also industry like Wipro 3D EOS many people participated so they told three highlighted three areas where you know they need engineers one is for design second is for uh, definitely design and software second is for uh, materials and third is for application and of course uh, more many much of uh, uh, attrition is happening even for machine technicians also they are not lasting they are getting more opportunities and going uh, to other places so the though the traction is uh, it could start with the um, uh, small enterprises but even the big players are now recruiting and uh, globally also there is a supply demand gap in these three areas so the specifically the report has come up with these three skill sets and on the basis of that only we are also designing some workshops uh, you know uh, design for additive manufacturing and something which is having major applications like uh, I was telling uh, Rakesh was also saying this in medical field and in uh, this um, uh, automotive field we are also doing uh, workshops on those but of course uh, we have to come up with a, a program which is a little long duration which gives them the necessary skill, diverse set of skills to understand the technology and uh, amalgamate it or marry it to the correct uh, materials and 
so that they can apply themselves so uh, it will need concerted effort of bringing the industry partners to help in giving little bit internship or opportunity at least with the help of other important uh, institutions if we develop uh, programs from one month two month up to six months these kind of courses can give upskilling with certification they can think of career change also we are thinking of uh, doing uh, fellowships uh, in the next 6 months because we are ramping up our infrastructure uh, we are going to have uh, going to float proposals inviting applications for fellowships uh, rakesh he will want uh, maybe he will answer for what research projects is there some opportunities if you come uh... if coming to the research areas uh, majorly the research is more on metal am and first and foremost artificial intelligence to be mixed in this uh, metal am areas and second one we can see this residual stresses being in, induced in the metal am uh, those uh, findings are the more uh, no high level people uh, people are working and can the combination of two metals like uh, stainless steel versus copper combination of two materials which people are doing a lot of research so these are the research areas in metal coming to polymers a lot of people have worked in and still there are certain combination of materials they are working at and composites uh, 3d printing also they are looking at so majorly we see the traction in the metal am research areas rather than the uh, fdm or sla related research areas which are becoming older day by day because uh, three four years back people used to do something from fdm but now a lot of papers have come up and all the research papers are on and we get a lot of information available so now people are more working towards metal am technologies and metal am information yeah yeah so uh the following up uh, on that on the same thing uh so teaching faculty what they are looking is some kind of connection with industries at least they can take up the projects from industry projects and get the project done by their students so it the students get the you know students can get hands on experience at the same time and can encam help teaching faculty to connect to industries you know there is a gap between the academia and industry in india how can encam you know fill that gap See, whatever the course encam conducts is in collaboration with an in the industry only for example next month we are conducting a course on the reverse engineering which is in collaboration with the hexagon correct and next and every month what we are doing is the whatever uh, point you have raised about the gap between industry and academia people have to come up and then we are ready to provide the industry gap and academia gap which we want to clear it off with these courses which we are giving for two days or three days and impart them the basic knowledge what industry is looking at and how the outputs are coming in so coming coming to encamps main role students internship which we will be starting next year because yes. our metal machine and our polyvinyl machine will be coming up for uh, uh, the complete provision by december so we can yes. provide internship for students and fdp programs also we are planning in house in encamp to make sure they get hands on on the metal machine and also polyvinyl machine which are very much not not there in so many people as they yes. are just showing the videos and they are not taking the main uh no uh, output from it so we are definitely in this one and um, our mandate also gives us to skill the people related to these uh, technologies and definitely we will be doing this in coming days after december hope i answered yes. yeah that looks good i think somebody raised hand yeah uh, somebody raise the hand if they can ask the question uh, hi uh, this is jain uh, i'm from uh, bangalore so my question is uh, whether uh, mcam is associated with any institute or any uh, company in bangalore so uh, i plan to upskill my uh, in uh, particularly uh, dfam any any association is there dfam in the sense uh, and particularly about topology optimization uh, yes sir in dfam in metal and 
uh, so maybe after october after machine finalization and everything so uh, as a presently we don't have any design partnerships but uh, coming days we are expecting to yeah we are working on the front